Good morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. A federal extortion indictment at Boston City Hall. How high up will this go? There are some, some adults in the situation here. That, 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 who are using the kids? Who, who are using the, the kids. Boston public school students protesting for more funding. Boston school superintendent Dr. Tommy Chang is here this morning. We'll talk about this. Libertarian Bill Weld for vice president. Our politically erratic former governor joins Gary Johnson's ticket. My wife just tells me that CNN has called Oregon for Bernie Sanders. And Bernie Sanders marches on. What will Hillary Clinton need to give him at the convention? And Donald Trump and alleged misbehavior toward women. How big an issue will it be? From WCVB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill, today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center political reporter Janet Wu. Thank you for joining us on OTR this morning. Our guest at the table is Dr. Tommy Chang, superintendent of Boston's public schools. He is just finishing his first school year in the new job. He's come here from California, where Dr. Chang was the charter school principal. He oversaw 130 schools. Dr. Chang is a graduate of UPenn and Loyola Marymount University. Welcome back to OTR. Here, and I, I want to ask you the same thing I asked you off camera. Do you like the job? Oh, love it. Love every, the job. every single day is great. No, even with the stress that's in here. Oh, absolutely. With it. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Thanks for being you, here. Janet. And Good speaking of stress, hundreds of high schoolers surrounded City Hall earlier this week uh, to deliver basically a message to you and to the mayor. And that percentage wise, the police and fire departments are getting more money than the school department. So my question to you is had you lobbied for more money and did you simply fail? No, I wouldn't say that. Of course we asked for more money, but we were provided $13.5 million uh, more than last year. We have the responsibility of creating a budget with that allocation. We did. We created a budget we're very proud of. And uh, where do you think if you had more money, you would put it? I think there are opportunities to invest in places where where some subgroups of students are not achieving right now. For so example? For, for example, in our fourth grade, one of the main projects uh, that we are engaging on is increasing rigor at fourth grade, having more enrichment activities at fourth grade. So we want to invest in that. What are rigor and enrichment, just so that everyone understands what you're talking about? Yeah, so right now in Boston Public Schools, we 10% of our students receive advanced work class, 90% mm -hmm. of our students get general education. Mm -hmm. We want to increase opportunity for fourth graders to have more, more advanced. advanced more rigorous curriculum yeah. and more enrichment. Yeah, I, and we just showed you the video of the hundreds of high schoolers surrounding City Hall. Now let's, let's even frame it. It's, it's kids who left school during MCAS and finals week to make a point. Just that act alone, is that the right thing to do? So proud that students are courageous, they want to voice their opinion. I'm not happy that they lost So were they time. wrong? No. The students, I, were they wrong? Uh, they, 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 of course they're not around. They are sharing their voice and they want to make sure they're heard. What I'm not happy about is that they left school, um, they lost instructional time, and we had to spend, make sure we had resources to make sure students were supervised mm -hmm. and they were safe. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness we have respectful students and they spoke uh, very eloquently, but they could have done it in other manners. And I want to encourage them to do that. Continue fighting. Oh, you're not saying it here, but the mayor said quite frankly that adults, and he was pointedly referring to Boston City Councilor Tito Jackson as being behind this and other controversies involving the Boston schools. Is this nothing more than politics? Are you saying that there are a sufficient number of teachers? There are enough classrooms? There are enough resources in the schools for next year? Uh, so Boston Public Schools is one of the uh, best funded school systems in the country. Our per people allocation is among the top five in the country. Uh, we could, we need to do better with the resources we're given. Of course, more resources would be helpful. And if we were to get more money, we would invest them in the right places. But given the allocation we have, I'm very proud of this budget. So you're saying this is nothing more than politics, and do you believe that the counselor Tito Jackson is doing, sort of, is behind a lot of this just to cause political upheaval? Councillor Jackson is very passionate about his beliefs uh, about students in Boston. I appreciate his advocacy. What I don't uh, appreciate is students leaving class mm -hmm. in the middle of the day. And, and another issue that, that the councilman is very vocal about involves racism allegations at Boston Latin. The head mistress remains there despite the alleged mishandling of the controversy. First question on that, is she going to stay? Yes the, yes. yes, the headmaster is staying at the school. And why isn't she responsible for ignoring all the complaints until they went public? Um, so she, as the headmaster of school, she is responsible for everything that happens at that school. And she uh, has 
taken accountability, we have to move forward. Doesn't mean that things um, were perfect. Things or things are perfect. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of things that we have to improve upon at that school, but she needs to lead that effort. How is how are things going to be different next year when it comes to um, the racial issues at Boston Latin? So this is work that's going to take many years. So some of the things we've immediately started, race dialogues for parents, students, faculty. We have provided training on how to make sure incidents uh, of of um, bullying, of racial intolerance, how are they to be reported? Uh, we are actually beginning a lot of work on increasing the diversity of students at Boston Land. So all that work is already started, have already started. I have just pulled the OTR prop quiz out of its hiding place. Oh. Share, spare your enthusiasm, don't be too soon. <laughs> you ready? Of course. Question one, archeologists will again dig in the former Roxbury yard of what past civil rights leader? I believe that is Malcolm X. That is Malcolm X. And speaking of Malcolm X, what is Malcolm X's real name? I don't know his real name, but I know one of his best friends was Yuri Koshinawa, who was an Asian American civil rights leader. Do we give him a that couple of points? That was an interesting let's, answer to that let's, question. Let's, 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 let's just give him at least <laughs> a half, half a point, point for that. Half of, that think? was very good. <laughs> that was very good. His real name is Malcolm Little, and he moved into the Dale Street home in 1941 as a teenager. We're That's gonna, right. I, so, I remember that from the movie. It's, so it's, this is one and a half, right? Is that where yeah. we are? Yeah, we're yeah, at one, we're and one and a half. One and a half from the... Boo's getting soft. I know. We'll be back on OTR. Stay with us.